a couple months ago, we just celebrated the Nativity of Christ, and here we are entering into a new season, a subsequent season here of our growth in our spiritual lives, in our faith, in our devotion to Jesus Christ. Today we bring out, or last night actually, at Vespers, and this morning if we'd done matins or during the hours, we bring out another book uh, of which we get some texts that are going to guide our lives and guide the uh, spiritual development and journey of this parish for the next mm, 60 some days or so until we come to uh, until we come to the Great and Holy Pascha itself. This book, and I see my little podium's kind of become a, uh, a desk today instead of just a lectern. We have a book called The Lenten Triodium, which is this one here. I'm going to quote from it in a few minutes. Um, but inside of here, through these pages, are all of the movable texts that we're going to use for all of the Vesper services and the Matin services and a lot of the daily services, especially in the first and last weeks of Great Lent. They're all in here. It's a call to repentance. It's a call to turn away from our former lives. It's a lesson in humility and repentance and in knowing who we truly are, sinful people in need of the help of God. Some people who just need to cry out, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And that's all there really is to say for some, and for all of us, actually. Last year we picked up uh, a little bit more. This hit, hits a lot of the things, but here we have the Lenten Triodian Supplement, right? Because if there's an Orthodox service, we can always add something else to it. We can always add another service. So here's a lot more of the text in a much smaller print than in the original book. But uh, you come for Wednesday matins, you'll see that. Okay, so it's not just about the book, and I'm not just trying to give you a history lesson or a liturgics lesson. The point is, we are entering a season where we have seen the incarnate Christ, the child born, come to save the world, all of the prophecies, especially in like the book of Isaiah. Read that, it's very good. Now, how do we begin and begin again every year to live the good Christian life? Last week, and while I was gone, uh, Father Vladimir was here, and he spoke about another publican. I honestly had never put this together until somebody noticed, uh, mentioned it to me during the week. Was it, you, was it you? Right? Zacchaeus was a publican, so we know that the, the next week of the pre-Lenten season will also be the publican and the Pharisee. So that's how we can remember it. Okay? A publican was the tax collector. A lot of us are paying our taxes this season. A lot of us, some of us are getting refunds. But for those of us who have to pay the taxes, right, you know that that's not a person that you really want to invite over to your house all the time. It's somebody who, well, let's go back to the first century understanding of a publican. They stole. A publican got his salary. The tax collector got his own uh, pay each week by adding a little bit more to your tax bill. And the publican and Zacchaeus and the other tax collectors that show up throughout the scriptures and throughout history, they didn't work for the local Jewish population. They worked for Rome. They worked for the man who was the king of a far-off country. Right? When far-off country shows up in the scriptures, it doesn't usually mean something good. Right? He would work for a foreign, oppressive government and then steal from his own brothers and sisters on top of that. Now, the other man who shows up in today's gospel lesson, the Pharisee, he was a teacher. And he says, and I like this, because these are good things for us to also emulate, but not to brag about. God, I thank you that I am not like other men. That's not the part that's okay. But the things that he says he doesn't do coming up, right? I'm not like other men. Well, guess what? We've done it before here. I've read, raise your hand if you have sinned sometime in the past week, sometime this morning since you left your house. We all have participated in or... Uh, uh, perpetrated a sin or two along the way. So we are like other men. We are like each other in that we're struggling in need of God's love. All right. I'm not like other men. They're extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this tax collector. Well, okay, we're not supposed to be extortioners. We're not supposed to be unjust or adulterers or even stealing from our brothers and sisters. That's good. We're not supposed to do those things. But this guy exalts in the fact that he is better than us. Or he's better than the publican. Here's the next part. We shouldn't brag about these things, but we should hold them in our hearts and let them transform us or 
make us into the spiritual vessels the Lord intended us to be. I fast twice a week and I give tithes of all that I possess. So is the Pharisee wrong in mentioning that he does those things? Well, he's right in doing those things. He's right in his fasting. He's right in sharing his spiritual gifts with the growth of the temple or the church or the faith community. But to brag about it, I fast twice a week. Whoopee, you skipped a couple meals. Has that really changed you if you want to brag about it and go downtown and scream it out in the middle of the Collins? Hey, I didn't have breakfast. No, nobody's going to care, <laughs> right? And if you look really sad and I haven't eaten, oh, no, 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 I don't need your money. I just need your pity and your attention, right? So there's really no good way to mention these things. They're not supposed to be mentioned. These are secret moments that we share with our Lord. When we fast, it's a time to allow him to come into our hearts. When we give of our, our physical gifts, of our money, of our time, of our talent, it's an offering made to God alone. And when we ask for thanks and praise and honor for giving what the Lord has just given us in the first place, you have your reward then, don't you? Hey, I gave $10,000 to the church. Put my name on a plaque. Super. That's your whole reward. What reward are we truly saving up for? The kingdom of heaven. Now the tax collector, while they're in the temple, it says this about him. He was standing afar off. So he was afraid to come towards the front of the temple, to come up towards where the offering was to be made or where he could hear the prayers. Really what he was afraid to come near was the throne of God. God lived in the Holy of Holies, in the very center of the temple. And the tax collector, the publican, was afraid to get near because he knew how wretched he was. Maybe he was an adulterer. Maybe he was an extortioner. We know he was. He was a tax collector. He took from his brothers and sisters. Maybe he was unjust in the way that he did it. Think of every movie where there's a tax man. He doesn't show up and say, thank you, I would like a check if that's okay with you. The tax man's always a bad guy when he comes around. So far back from the temple, far back, not from the temple, but from the Holy of Holies, he throws himself on the ground and utters a much smaller prayer. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. What else is there to ask God for? Very good, you're not an extortioner. Very good, you were just the other day. Okay, good things to do. But to really come to a relationship with him, we have to recognize the sinfulness that is within our own selves. We don't need to recognize the sinfulness that is in other people. Thank God I'm not like the publican. We need to recognize what needs to change in our own hearts. Within any relationship, within a marriage, within the relationship that you have with the pastor of your church or your brothers and sisters or your mothers and fathers, if there's something wrong in the relationship... Just some sort of little tiny pathology. Who's the only person that can change that relationship? You can only change yourself. You can't change the other person. So we have to look inside of ourselves. We have this wonderful time of the year, a tithe of this year, where we focus on healing what's going wrong inside of our own hearts. All right. Now, this is my own personal copy of the Lenten Triodian. We don't have one for the parish. Uh, maybe someday. It's not, a, not that bad. And we have most of these texts online anyway. And I got mine at a discount. So you can see this is the front cover. I have to flip it over and upside down to be able to read it. I got it on a discount. Half price. Okay. Some of the things you'll hear when you come for what some people would call the extra services, or as I just call the services of the church, You'll hear explanations. You'll hear the deeper spiritual meaning of some of these older gospel stories that are moving around in our hearts, and you'll see those deeper uh, lessons being drawn out of them. So last night, while I happened to be driving, but a lot of people were here singing, we sang this at the Lord I Call verses. A Pharisee, overcome with vainglory, and a publican, bowed down in repentance, came to thee, the only master. The one boasted and was deprived of his blessings, while the other kept silent and was counted worthy of gifts. Confirm me, O Christ our God, in these 
his cries of sorrow, for thou lovest mankind. The great and holy hymnographers of our church were able to describe something so clearly, so succinctly, in very few words, which you all know I cannot do, right? The Pharisee was overcome with vainglory, and that was his reward. The publican, repentance, forgive me, I'm unworthy, was counted worthy of great gifts. And this text from the Matin service, which we didn't do this morning, maybe someday we will, this has to be our personal response to this coming season of repentance, our own personal response to the parable of the Pharisee and the publican. Open unto me, O giver of life, the gates of repentance. For early in the morning my spirit seeks thy holy temple, bearing a temple of the body all defiled. But in thy compassion cleanse it by thy loving kindness and thy mercy. Open unto me the gates of repentance. See, what happens there is God has already made the first step towards forgiving us of our sins. God has already come out to meet us. We just need to, to open our eyes a little bit and see that he's right there willing and ready to forgive. So that's the pretty good lesson about repentance, isn't it? The Lord has promised to forgive we now want to turn. We get to turn. We have the opportunity to turn back to him to ask for forgiveness of our sins. Not to justify that our former behavior was okay and excusable. Sometimes we've done things in the past we just need to get over. I'm very generic here. I'm not talking about anybody, anything in particular. But hopefully there's something kicking around in your heart. We don't need to justify ourselves the Lord can do that. We don't need to say that what I'd done in the past was all good, even if it was sinful. We turn away from what was wrong. And following the example of the tax collector, the publican, we just groan with our heart. Very simple words. Not, hey, I came to all the services last week and I took communion 48 times last year. No. The simple words of the publican, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I said to, uh, I guess I was talking to, I don't remember who. I said, sometimes the only prayer that's in my heart, when I look at maybe somebody in our parish who's struggling with something, or a family member, or whatever, it's just that my heart just goes, ugh. I don't need a word just to lay myself bare in front of the Lord and say, I can't fix this. I can't fix it anyway, even if I had the strength. It's the Lord who works through us. We are in the preparatory season for Great Lent. This coming week is a fast, free week because we were built to celebrate. But we want to be prepared when the great celebration of Holy Pascha comes, ready to receive Christ with pure, cleansed hearts. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, glory to Jesus Christ.